And my first job as an economic hitman was in Indonesia. This was 1971, and at that time Indonesia was in turmoil. And we had discovered oil in Indonesia, thought Indonesia had a tremendous amount of really good oil. It didn't turn out to be quite as good as we thought. But also Indonesia had the largest Muslim population in the world, as it still does, I believe. And uh, it, we knew that we were losing in Vietnam, and we believed in this domino effect, that if Vietnam went, the next would be Indonesia and other Southeast Asian countries. So my job was to go into Indonesia and win over the government, essentially enslave the government, because the government was teetering with, with, with Russia. So, you know, were they going to go with the Soviets or were they going to go with us? So my job was to go in and convince the government of Indonesia, from the president on down, that they should accept this huge loan to build electrical installations across the island of Java, where the main population is, and several of the other islands. And we knew, of course, that these electrical installations, big power plants, transmission lines, and distribution systems would be built by our companies. So the idea is that you get a loan from the World Bank, huge loan, Indonesia signs off on the loan using their, the oil that's under the ground as the collateral. Nobody's ever seen it. The money never goes to Indonesia. It goes from a bank in Washington, D.C. to one in Houston or San Francisco to Bechtel or Brown and Root or one of our big construction companies. Never, the Indonesians never see this money. The U.S. corporation, or now a multinational corporation, goes to Indonesia and builds these power plants and transmission lines, and the Indonesians owe them all the, all the money to the banks. And the electricity serves a few very wealthy families who own the big industries and the commercial establishments, the new shopping malls that were being built at that time, and the condominiums. But the people don't get it. The people's lands get destroyed, transmission lines run over them, power plants are built on them. The people don't get the electricity. Sometimes they try to steal it, and they, many of them die in the process. And the corruption involved in something like this is phenomenal as we all know, tremendous amounts of corruption. And it's easy for us in the United States to say, oh, those corrupt governments in Tunisia or Indonesia or wherever, but we forget to ask, who the hell corrupted them? Me, us, we're the ones going over there. And I have to say that we had very strict laws, this is in the 70s in the United States, that I could not pay bribes to anybody, but I could hire expediters, Indonesian people, who are highly connected with the government and pay them huge amounts of money and not ask where it was going. And the other thing that we could do, these subtle ways of corruption, so you let the president of the country know that if he signs off on this deal that's going to bankrupt his country eventually, put it in our hands, make it so that at some time they're going to have to work out deals where they basically sell off their utilities to our corporations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, let us build military bases, all of this, if he accepts that, then his brother-in-law, who owns the John Deere franchise, is going to get some very sweet deals. We're going to pay him $200 million for a contract that's only worth $100 million. That's not illegal. It's a bribe, but it's not an illegal bribe. And we're going to pay for the kids of, all of him and all of his friends. We're going to give them scholarships. We're going to make sure they get into good universities in the United States and pay scholarships to them and give them jobs during the summer and vacations. Very sweet deals. And we'll even brag about that. My company did that. We gave scholarships all over the place to, to people in other countries. And we bragged about it. Yeah, we're giving all these scholarships to the young kids from Indonesia and Colombia and Panama and all over. We never bothered to say that the only kids that got these scholarships were the children of extremely wealthy, extremely powerful individuals. We didn't bother to tell the public that. The public didn't want to know, I don't think. Corruption. Tremendous amounts of it. And today we know that if you read, read the uh, transparency index, tra transparency, whatever the CPI, whatever it's called, uh, the, uh, many of the Islamic countries in the Middle East, and including Indonesia, are uh, very low on the list. This tremendous corruption. But I think we in the United States and in Europe have to take the credit for a great deal of that corruption. We fostered these systems. We created fake countries that weren't even there. 
We brought people into power, and we keep them in power. Mubarak is a great example. You know, I was shocked here in the United States to go around this country when Mubarak was being overthrown and ha hearing people say, well, but he's a, he's a democratically elected president. People in the United States didn't know that Mubarak was a dictator. It's amazing. It's shocking to me how uneducated we are, and I know you all have experienced that, and that's part of where the bigotry comes from.